الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا أذى لهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون قول معروف ومغفرة خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى والله غني حليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى كالذي ينفق ما له رئاء الناس ولا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فمثله كمثل صفوان عليه تراب فأصابه وابل فتركه صلدا لا يقدرون على شيء مما كسبوا والله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين ومثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم ابتغاء مرضات الله وتثبيتا من أنفسهم وتثبيتا من أنفسهم كمثل جنة كمثل جنة بربوة أصابها وابل فآتت أكلها ضعفين فإن لم يصبها وابل فطل والله بما تعملون بصير 
أَيَوَدُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ جَنَّةٌ مِّن نَّخِيلٍ وَأَعْنَابٍ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ له فيها من كل الثمرات وأصابه الكبر وله ذرية ضعفاء فأصابها إعصار فيه نار فاحترقت كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات لعلكم تتفكرون جزاك الله خير شيخ مجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم respect to elders brothers and sisters in islam ladies and gentlemen welcome to the fundraiser for the samamish masjid my name is shamsuddin and i will be your mc this evening a uh, matter of uh, logistics first in the table in front of you make sure you have the pledge forms uh, please make sure you have them and uh, if, you, if you're going to make a pledge by a credit card, uh, what you need to do is to write out the pledge amount in the, in the pledge form. You don't have to give your credit card number, just the pledge amount. And then you can uh, uh, go online and uh, make the payment. I know it's a very difficult journey for many of us. You know, you work all week. And then this is a long weekend, the first long weekend of the summer. And on a day when it's actually not raining, you have chosen to come here. This is a blessing for the community and the masjid, that in spite of all the attractions out there, you have chosen to spend this time on a weekend to help raise funds for the masjid. May Allah reward you and your families for this effort. I mean. I was asked to, a couple of people asked me to repeat the story I said earlier about the four Imams. It's, it's actually the story of four Imam. Uh, the, I, I was traveling on a plane, wasn't me, but I was just to make the story. I was traveling on the plane and it was going through very bad weather. And I was sitting next to the Imam and I said, Imam, you're a man of God, do something. And he said, I'm in sales, not in management. So we continued through the flight. Um, I will now ask the president of Samamish Masjid, uh, Brother Muhammad Arshad, uh, to come and say a few words in his welcome speech. So just checking if the clicker is working. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be upon you. Good evening. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and our distinguished leaders of the community. All the praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and blessing. And thank you for your support to help us embark on this esteemed and prestigious project of establishing a neighborhood masjid to serve the community of Samamish and Isakwa. So why we need to establish a masjid? And why we are doing this project? So the role of a neighborhood masjid uh, in the lives of Muslims uh, have a great importance. It is actually a beating heart of the Muslim community and a focal point for everyone.
the allah like us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like us to see that brotherhood and love to spread am among the believers so the masjid is a place where muslims meet five times a day for their congregational prayers so the masjid needs to be conveniently located in the residential neighborhoods and one of the brother actually he comes to the masjid very um said in a very 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 concise way in a single word saying that this masjid in the neighborhood is actually a lifeline for all of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take care uh, wants to care for prevail in the practice among muslims so the masjid is a place where zakah and the charity is collected and spent so it actually serves the whole community and also the the masjid is actually is a place for the unity cooperation among the muslims and that actually provides a platform for the muslims so there are no differences when the muslims stands in a row for the salah there is no difference between the races origin social status they are all equal in the masjid additionally allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like islam to be pre prevalent deen so the masjid is a center and the base of dawah to allah uh, dawah to um, to the community and the people around um, muslims and non muslims equally so it is uh, important for us to get that message out and get this uh, educated knowledge of deen and it's again in incumbent upon us to get this message correctly to all the muslims as well as the non muslims equally so again it's the dawa center as well again establishing a masjid is a hard and long process that needs a lot of work expertise wisdom patience and follow up and jazakallah khairan and thank you for all of you to be part of this and coming to this event today so our journey just a quickly we started uh, 2002 in samamish couple of brothers uh, gathered together organized some sala doing it in their homes and in their garages and again the effort became more organized in 2003 one of the brother brother sale actually initiated a tarawi uh, place for the convenient located uh, during the month of ramadan in 2004 a number of brothers came together to establish in a in a in an apartment rented an apartment and started a regular sala five times a day and alhamdulillah with the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and support from all the community we actually purchased a masjid on 20th southeast in samamish in 2010 so where we st stand today serving the samamish sakwa neighborhood community Uh, there is a five times salah ongoing so there is actually an agreement between us and the city right now to 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 continue with this five times salah while we are in also uh, condition use permit process uh, there is a school youth juma program of, um, after school for uh, all the youth that we have uh, we established that we, we cannot do a juma for the whole community right now because we are still in the condition use permit process and there is also a school quran classes after school for our kids uh, happening today and there are a number of uh, tafsir weekly classes that is happening for the community and and we established a board of trustees in 2000, 2010 because now we have a mosque there is a lot more responsibility out there and so it's oversighting the uh, board of directors and we com completed the condition use permit application process uh in in march 2010 so the application have been submitted and is in the due process right now so just to give a quick quick idea like well, while we started this process um 
I can tell you it's, it's actually become a talk of the town right now. Uh, every week since this process started, um, there is one or two articles in the, in the press uh, in the Sammamish. And the reason to bring it up is to, to tell the importance that, uh, and the attention this project is gaining uh, within the community. And it's become incumbent upon us to actually support the project and drive it through. So Sammamish Reporter, Sammamish Review, and also City uh, uh, had an article on, on this project. And um, there have been positive uh, feedback as well. There has been good comments, good welcome um, um, messages as well. And there has been some biased opinions and biased messages as well. So uh, it's, it's a mix. But again, um, as Muslims, uh, we need to show that how uni united we are and how supportive we are of this project and how important this is for us. And that's why we all are here as well. So what are our next steps? So one of the biggest milestones that we are looking at is completing this condition use permit. And that will actually allow us to do uh, Juma Salah and also do the Tarawih on, on site. Uh, so far we've been doing it in the church and establishing more after school programs for our kids and run monthly DAWA open programs and holding neighborhood community social events. So basically, before, before I leave, uh, one, of the, one, one story I would like to um, share with you today, and again, this, you might have already heard about this, uh, but it relates very closely to what we are doing here today. Um, in my opinion, I will call it a no regret story, but story says, that everybody will regret. So one of our sheikh actually also uh, uh, told this story, so you might have already heard about this. So once a group of people were traveling on rocks at night, a voice came from the sky that whoever picks up the rocks will regret, and whoever does not pick up the rocks will regret. Now the people were confused what to do. How can this be? Whether we pick up the rocks or not, will regret. So anyhow, some of the people picked up the rocks, and the some did not. In the morning, when they reached their destination, and they looked at it, so they were not rocks, they were diamonds. Now those people who did not pick up the rocks started regretting, saying, if only we had picked up some of them. And those people who picked up some of them started to regret saying, why not we picked up more? Both eventually end up regretting. Dear Muslims, in same incident will take place, the same incident will take place with us on the day of judgment. Those people who spend their time in useless things will start regretting by looking at those who achieved a great position in paradise by spending their time in the way of Allah. Now those who did not achieve a position in the paradise will start regretting by looking at those, sorry, now those who did achieve a position in paradise will start regretting by looking at those who did more than them at a higher level in Jannah. So alas, so this is a time for us to do what we can in the best of our abilities, and that's what we are here. So let's Tonight, after tonight we leave, there are no regrets. We do our best to actually get all the baraka and hasana that we can collect to su and support this masjid. So let's not be any regrets today. So thank you very much again. Jazakallah khairan for, khairan for all of you coming. And I appreciate all the efforts for all the volunteers and all your support. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Brother Arshad. <clears throat> we, the, our next speaker is going to be the member of the Board of Trustees for Samamish Zakwa Masjid, Brother Vaseem Fayed. But before we bring him on, we're going to give you a little taste, remember, a little taste of what is going to follow later. And for that taste, I'm going to ask this gentleman, Greg, uh, Greg Budnick, or Benick, excuse me, Greg Benick to come up uh, 
and just say a few words. He's a uniquely talented keynote entertainer, globally renowned. He's a comedian, a juggler, a philosopher, a teacher. I mean, I could go on, but as I said, this is just a taste. So, Greg. Thank you so much for having me this evening to your event. And I appreciate so much the sense of community that I feel being here. Of course, not being immediately from part of your community, to be welcomed into this evening means so much to me. Because of course, through community, anything is possible. And I wanted to actually start off with something that might seem impossible in order to introduce us to the evening and introduce us to the idea of community and what's possible when we work together towards a common goal. So coming up in a little while, of course, I'll be doing some entertainment, as you can see from the things behind me. But for the moment, I thought it would be pretty remarkable if I could actually balance this chair atop my face. Now, if I was actually able to balance the chair atop my face and then give everyone here a visual signal with my hands, it would be most amazing if we could fill the room with applause. That would be a sign of what could happen when we work together here with a sense of connectedness and a sense of community. So remember, I will balance the chair I will give you a visual signal, and the room will fill with applause. But of course, you have to wait for the signal, so not a moment before. Get ready. Get set. Here we go. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, Greg, what other completely useless skills have you learned over the years? Well, I'm happy to tell you that there are, in fact, many. Coming up a little bit later, there will be the juggling of a blade. There will be the juggling of so many juggling balls in the air at one time, it will be hard to count. There will be audience interaction. We will utilize some of the children who will be here later, and all of it with a sense of working together and teamwork, a sense of community and accomplishing goals together. The goal later on, entertainment for the evening for all of you in honor of your most prestigious event. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you in a little while. As I said, just a little taste. Um, we'll ask Brother Vaseem Fayed. He is a member of the Board of Trustees for the Samayama Shisikwa Masjid uh, to come up and say a few words. I think you will continue with a slight presentation. If, yeah. I'm a little short here. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khair everybody for coming in here in support of the house of Allah Azawajal in Samamish. May Allah reward you all, reward your folds inshallah, and grant you the highest level of Jannah inshallah in paradise. Before I, um, so the things I will talk about is give you a, an update on our financial statement, which, where we stand now and where we think what is our forecast for the next year. And after that, I will uh, talk about what is next. What do we need to do in order to complete this project, inshallah, uh, of establishing the House of Allah Azawajal, a neighborhood masjid in the heart of Samamish. So the first, um, let me hear, cool be able to read one okay so currently we started in 2010 with twenty six thousand um, dollars this is this was our starting balance as you can see and then we this is how much money we had when we went to purchase the property uh, on southeast 20th and alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa Jal made it with your support and your help and with the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, we were able to actually purchase the property and we raised a total of $252,000. And then we spent $229,000 in the down payment on the house and all the work and the, the, you know, the, the things that we need to spend in order to get the place up and running so we can use it. And then by year, year end, we ended up with $50,000. So main, most of this money, as you can see, was spent 
into the masjid expense. $208,000 purchasing, putting the down payment, uh, making payments on the, on the masjid, uh, paying the bills, maintaining the lawn, maintaining the electricity and all those things. And also we got some zakat money that was donated to the, to the masjid. And all the zakat money goes directly to help local needy Muslim in the area, alhamdulillah. And we've been doing quite a bit of that lately as well. So this is our balance sheet in 2010. Where are we in 2011? We're starting with the $50,000 from the year before. And then we had some additional donations came to us throughout the year. And then at the end, we ended up with, uh, um, right now by May 22nd, we were at 22, uh, tw around $20,000. And this is where we're at. So as you can see, um, our mesh, you know, how we spent the money, $40,000 went towards, directly towards the masjid, making the payment on the masjid, and some zakat money that also w w was collected and paid directly to needy families in the area as well. So with that, we have a major project ahead of us, which is getting the condition, conditional use permit approved. And Brother Muhammad Arshad told you about it, which is today we have what we call a code violation agreement with the city. And the code violation agreement meaning that they understand that we are using the property the way we're using it. They're putting limitation for us on parking. We only have eight cars that can park at one time, and we can have at most 20 people praying at the masjid. And we're trying, when we're absorbing that at the masjid, Ob ob observing, observing this at the masjid. So when people come in and they say, see eight cars there, they turn around and go away. So until we fix the condition use permit, we are depriving people from coming and praying at the masjid of, uh, of uh, House of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we do need the support. And we think that the condition use permit expenses, which is mainly implementing the parking and the associated drainage, is around $300,000. And with our operating expenses, we're looking at $400,000 for the next year. And we're hoping to raise as much as we can today towards achieving, achieving this goal. And with Allah's blessing and help and support, and with your support, inshallah, we would like to see how much we can achieve with the grace and mercy of Allah. So our target goal is $400,000, as you can see. So where and how, what are the next steps, and was it, what is our progress as we move forward? So... The, um, let, me, let me bring this up here so I can read better. So we, as you can see, we purchased the masjid in June of 2010. And after we signed that agreement with the city, now the city gave us a timeline on, how, on where we need, on how we need to execute to get the condition use permit approved. For example, they told us that by March fourth of this year, 2011, we should have had all our paperwork submitted to the city. So what we've done, we've taken, we've done all the studies, we've done, done all the drawings, we've done all the homework that we need to do, and we submitted our paperwork on time. And now that the paperwork has been submitted to the city, the city went through the first level of reviews. We've done a review ourselves, we, have a, a, we had a, a community meeting, we met with the neighbors, and then the city made an open request to the neighbors to give feedback. And the neighbors have given feedback. So the things that we've done as part of that condition use permit, this first submittal to the city, we've done traffic study, geo geotech study, we've done survey, we've done the plans, we've drawn the plans, we've given, given the city everything the city needs in order to start working on the process toward approving us for the condition use permit. As a matter of fact, we got the very first approval, which is the traffic um, impact study. The city did a study around the city of Sammamish, and based on that study, they realized that with the, with the impact of this masjid, it's not going to, get, to add any additional um, uh, stress on the city's traffic and the, and the roads. Therefore, there's no need for us to do anything more beyond that. We already have a certificate for that, and it's valid for 180 days. So alhamdulillah, we achieved very, you know, one small milestone as part of the condition use permit process. But what is next? What are the things that we need to look forward for? And then as you can see here, um, let me, 
I'm trying to flip two different things at the same time. It's kind of hard for me. So um, the city has collected a ton of feedback from the neighbors. Unlike any other project in the city of Sammamish, this project has collected by far some of the most feedback from the neighbors, not only in the streets of the southeast 20th, but from everywhere in Sammamish. As Brother Muhammad Arshad mentioned earlier today, we are in the paper every single week for the past you know, few months now. This week, there was one art article. The week before, two articles. The week before, one article. I mean, we're every single week, somebody's writing something about the masjid. And then if you look, and I've read every single feedback that was sent to the city, every single one of them. I read all of them. There are some of them that are, alhamdulillah, very, very supportive. But some of them, you know, they're very valid feedback. The neighbors have some valid com concerns. Alhamdulillah, we have all the knowledge and all the technical skills, inshallah, to be able to address those things. So alhamdulillah, there is nothing that blocks us from moving forward, inshallah. But the thing is, there is some misconception that's been thrown out to the neighbors about who we are, what are we doing, and what, what is our intent. For example, some of the, there are some people that organize themselves on Southeast 20th. They got together and they're sending flyers and telling people, this is what's going to happen. They're saying, these are Muslim people. They're going to have 40 parking stalls. And they're going to come five times a day with 40 cars to the masjid. And that's, that's uh, 40 times 10. That's 400 trips going back and forth to the masjid every single day. And we know this is not true. right? So we, need, we just need basically to educate the neighbor and show them that this is our community. And this is how many cars are going to be coming in. And basically, most of us work during the day, and we're not in the city. So we have all the data, and we have all the details, basically, to educate the community. And once they're educated, inshallah, there's nothing that stops us from a code perspective and from a technical perspective from proceeding, inshallah. The only thing that is now standing between us and the condition use permit, sometime, some responses from the city to get to us, we will respond to them. Once everything goes through, we know this, the, the neighbors might go through uh, to a hearing examiner. We will go through that process, but everything is technical, inshallah. And once everything is approved, we need to establish the parking lot in a very timely manner. Because, because we, the fact that we're operating under a code violation agreement with the city, once the city approves the process, they're going to give us a timeline. They're going to say, you have to implement the project within this time frame. So therefore, we need to adhere to the rules and the laws and the time frame that's going to be given to us by the city. So once the city approves the process, it might go through a hearing examiner. And what, now what they're going to do is they, they're going to expect from us to respond to the feedback from the city. We do respond to them, then they're going to approve it. There's some process, and as you can see, all of it is listed in here. You can read through it. But I don't want to bore you with all the details, but in the, the, the gist of it is what I just told you, inshallah. With that, um, let me go to the next slide. Um, so what are the items that we need to establish? Very Two couple things. This is it. Once we implement this, then we're done, which is establishing a parking lot with the associated drainage that goes with it and have the accessibility. Whatever the city is going to require us, we're going to do. And this is uh, the next one, which is this is basically the proposed plan. As you can see, the masjid itself, we're not doing any changes to it. The house is going to remain. It's, it's more than enough for us for years and years and years to come, inshallah. Um, the only thing that we need to do is put the parking lot, and the parking lot is a requirement by the city. It's not something that we just desire. I mean, it's good for us to have, but it's a requirement from the city. So we will build the parking lot here. The access will be directly from Southeast 20th. And then here there will be a pond that will actually hold the water and uh, capture the water that's going to come to the, to the parking lot. And then we will drain it and we will filter it so it will not uh, affect the sensitive lake, which is the pine lake that we have next to us. So with that, I would like to give it um, to the um, uh, brother Shabsuddin. Jazakallah khair, Shab. Yes, I got it. 
once again, I apologize uh, because we started late, and so we have pretty severe time constraints. And uh, for our uh, main main speaker, uh, uh, it's it's going to become a challenge. So uh, we I'd like to invite uh, Imam Juban, Sheikh Juban, to come and say a few words. And again, I I've already talked to him and restricted to a couple of minutes because we are really way behind time. Imam Juban. Uh, one other thing while he is coming up, if you look at the program, uh, if you look behind it uh, or in the front page, there's uh, ayat of the Quran in there. So please uh, don't put it under your food or your plate and just treat it with a little bit of respect. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I did ask Fazmuddin just to pass me, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala sinna Muhammad. Wa ala wa sahbi ajma'in. I just want to share a story in, in Turkey, in the city called Al-Fatih. There is masjid called Sinki Yadum. I mean, this very interesting. He said, look like I eat it. If it in your I just imagine that you eat it. Why this masjid with this strange name? Look like I eat it. He said, there's a man, every time that he going, he have desire to eat meat or Starbucks, he hold it. He just imagine, okay, I drink Starbucks, I eat the meat, and put the money in the box. Just continue for years. Until when he open one day, that money is enough to build a mosque in that city. So if you go to Turkey, to the city of Fatih, you can find the masjid with this name. Right? His name was Haji, Nur, uh, Haji Nuruddin. Right? So inshallah, today we make intention. Right? So something that's not necessary, like Starbucks, for example, just hold it and put it. And the last one, inshallah, just one minute. The Prophet said, as salatu nur. Prayer is light. When you always pray, Allah gives you light into your heart to you know what right and what wrong. Into your mind, you always make good decision. But at the same time, in the judgment, when you pass the bridge, there will be dark. On the day, then you see the believers pass the bridge and the light before them and on the right. So we need that light. But maybe you have light and you pass, but you need the ID. You know what? The ID. Without ID, you will not go past. The Prophet said, as burhan. as burhan. Charity is the proof, is the ID. So inshallah, tonight, when we have, we have light, inshallah, and also we have ID, inshallah. Dakallah khair, salamu barakatuh, inshallah. It is time now for a main event, the reason you have come today. Um, but I'd like to share some good news with our uh, guest speaker. Uh, and the good news is, uh, I, I understand uh, the uh, total we are looking for is about 400,000. Uh, the money is there. So I'm really happy to let you know that the money is there. Uh, your challenge is, uh, it's there, but it's in their pockets so far. Your challenge is to bring it out here. Okay. Uh, before I introduce him, I'd like to share a little story with you. There was once a very rich man who was near death. He was very grieved because he couldn't take his money with him. And so he kept praying to God that I, I'd like to take my wealth to paradise. And he prayed so hard that an angel came to him and the angel said, Hey, what's, you can't do that. You can't take anything up there. He said, No, I want to. I've saved all my life. I've worked very hard. And so, please, go and ask God if I can take my wealth. So the angel goes, comes back and says, you know, you're a very lucky person. God has granted your wish. You can take your wealth with you. So what he did, he filled a suitcase full of gold, and he took it with him. 
And when he went up there, he met another angel who said, what is this? No one is, comes here with luggage. He said, no, no, I checked. I was being given permission. So go and check. So the angel went, checked. He said, you're right. You can. What did you bring? So he opened the suitcase. It was full of gold bars. And the angel said, paradise, the pavement is made of gold. You bought pavement from earth? So you really can't take pavement. It is time that you can give it here. So let me now introduce you to our guest speaker. Oh, man. OK. Brother Ridwan Saleh is a former president of the board of directors of the Islamic Society of Greater Houston. He was born in New York and lived abroad for a number of years and thus became fluent in Arabic. Obviously, he's fluent in English, too. He has been a caller to Islam for 18 years, and he's held multiple roles within the Islamic community and has been actively involved in providing community service. Brother Saleh is a licensed volunteer by the State of Texas Correctional Facilities and a formal board member of Darul Arqam, full-time Islamic school, and a PTA president. He is also a Friday sermon speaker. Currently, he is in South Central Operations Director with Islamic Relief USA. Brother Saleh has been a teacher as well as an advisor for teens in the Houston, Texas area. He studied liberal arts at the University of Iowa and is a Microsoft certified professional. Brother Saleh has studied most of his books of Islamic traditions, hadith, as well as different schools of thought within the Islamic religion. Please welcome Brother Ridwan Saleh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know you just ate. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I might uh, take this with me later on, inshallah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. What is it that makes one speak ill of another? For no reason except their own formulated, preconceived ill notions. And what is it that compels one to look at another with gazing eyes of disgust and belittlement? For no reason except bigotry, hate, and ignorance. And that word ignorance, we must underline it. In particular, when it comes to the Muslim community in the public eye. Unfortunately, today, brothers and sisters, the Muslim community, which is the fifth wave that came to America, similar to so many immigrants who came to America bearing the brunt of hate and ignorance. And you see, ignorance when it comes to the interfaith community. It is the centerpiece on the table of discussions. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, the Muslim community in America has not been understood yet. And looking at this, I would sound like a broken record for all of you who heard me before. The overwhelming majority of this congregation, we are immigrants to America. And one of the very wrong notion that I continuously hear, and that unfortunately continuously festers in the minds of many, that America is home away from home. And as I continuously say to all of those who hear us on continuous basis, I have a problem with anyone that says from our community that America is home away from home. America is no longer home away from home. America is home. And the reason I say this, if we continuously believe in this very wrong notion that America is home away from home, then we will continuously think that we are in this country temporarily. And our 
visionaries, the predecessors who lived in this country before us, who built so many masajid in this country, mosques and Islamic centers and established Islamic institutions and Islamic organizations, these thoughts and visions would have never came to fruition if they did not put it into practice. And the reason they put such vision into practice because they negated the very wrong notion that America is home away from home. If I have been in America for the past 25, 40, or even 60 years, America no longer becomes home away from home, America becomes home. And that obviously gives us the right to call ourselves Muslim Americans. Though many might frown upon this, I would say, what else would you call a child that was born and raised in America? But a Muslim American. Isn't there a Chinese Muslim, a Palestinian Muslim, a Jordanian Muslim, or a Lebanese, a Pakistani, or an Indonesian Muslim? A European Muslim or an African Muslim? And automatically there is nothing wrong by saying that I am an American Muslim. And you see, in America, it is one of the very few countries around the world that people break into rather than breaking out of it. It is the aim of so many people around the world to be part of this country, so we must be proud to call ourselves Muslim Americans. We have been given that choice. You see, the highest authority of our land the President of the United States of America. In his opening remarks, he said that America belongs to Christians and Muslims, Jews and Hindus, and non-believers. In other words, we have the right to build our masajid or mosques. And so our brethren from the Jewish community and the Christian community and the Buddhist community. There is nothing in the constitution of our country that says that America belongs to a certain group, race, or creed. America belongs to all of us. And so we have the right to also build our Islamic constitutions and in turn build our Islamic mosques. As I said earlier, the word ignorance is truly the epicenter of the dilemma, the problem that faces the Muslim community in the public eye. And as I said before, it is the centerpiece that must be discussed on the table of discussion. But you see, brothers and sisters, today we might be the immigrants of yesteryears. But Islam has not been foreign to this country because in the yester century, Islam was in America. Islam came in the slave ships that arrived here from Africa. And so in the beginning, immigration began in 1840, mostly by Turks and Yemenis. They settled in Dearborn, Michigan, in Quincy, Massachusetts, and in Rose, North Dakota. They came to America in the 19th century, running away from the hardship that plagued their countries. And so the early era of mosques or masajid in America is not a new found idea. And you will be surprised to know the following, the following research that was conducted by a young sister, a young lady from Harvard University. She said the early era of mosques in America, it says that in 1915, the first mosque was founded. Was it founded by Pakistani community in America? Was it founded by the Arab community in America? It was founded by Caucasian white Albanians, Muslims in Maine, in the East Coast. And in 1934, the first building, the first facade of a masjid, a place where you would enter to conduct your congregational prayers. It was in 1934 
in a place where I personally visited in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And today they label it the Mother Mosque. I met the Ajram family from Lebanon. And I met the Asi family also from Lebanon. These were the early Arab who came to America, came to work in the farmlands, and also were merchants in the middle of our country. But they also had a vision to cultivate and bring their community together. At the time, it was called the Anadil Islami, the Islamic club. And I have seen the elders of that community. Their vision speaks to them about the way they conducted their business in bringing the, the families together. In 1907, the first Muslim organization before ISNA or ICNA or any of these elite organizations or national Islamic organizations that you hear about in America. And it was formed by the following people. The Polish, the Russians, and the Lithuanian Muslims in New York City. Once again, these were not Pakistanis. These were not your traditional people who come together to build mosques and masajid in America. They were not from the Arab community, regardless of what land they came from. Once again, they were Caucasian, white, who embraced Islam, or they were Muslims to begin with, who emigrated to America and decided to build the first Islamic organization. And so the history of growth of Islam in America, it is something not only to celebrate, but it's something to be proud of. For America gave us the opportunity to be who we are. We should really be proud that we live in a country where we get to celebrate our own religion and our own identity without anyone makes us feel inferior about it. After all, Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one has the right to make you feel inferior without your consent. And so I stand before you to say that all of these minority hollow drums of hate, who are truly a minority, they are yet to learn about this religion. And they are yet to sit on the table of discussion to find out who we are and what are we all about. You see, from amongst this very small congregation, a physician wakes up every morning to take care of those who are in need of health care from the Muslim community. And every morning from amongst this Muslim community of ours, a businessman or a woman emerges out of their homes to make sure that the prosperity and the economical well-being of our country is intact. And every morning from amongst us, a professor, an educator, leaves their home to educate the young minds of America from the Muslim community. And so not only do we belong to this country and proud to be so, we truly contribute to the well-being of America. And that's the ignorance that I have been talking about oftentimes. And so by building a masjid or by building an Islamic center, it truly brings the people together from all faith. Because I assure you, once we open our doors in this masjid, which we should work very hard to do so, People from other faith would want to come and visit us in our masjid, in our mosque. They want to break bread with us in Ramadan. They want to know us. And so this becomes a place to show or showcase our religion in a way that is different than what it has been seen or known about in the media. So the history of growth, 87 of all the mosques were built only in the last three decades, according to Faith and Community Today, or an organization called FACT. Of course, California, of all places, your neighboring state, has more mosques than any other state in the country. 
and the fastest growing religion in America today. You see, in America, it is a country of, thank you so much, it is a country of, it is a country that has a market of ideas. Each and every one of us has the right to package our religion, our ideology or idea, and sell it. The evangelists do so. The Coptics do so. The Catholics do so. Even Satanists, those who worship Satan, do so. And the platform is called America. And so I am proud to say that somehow I succeeded in my religion being the fastest growing religion, a fact that I will not hide. In fact, it's a fact that I would celebrate. The survey shows that there is 1,209 mosques or masajid in the USA. Over half have been built in the last 20 years alone. So 17 to 30 percent of all American Muslims are happen to be convert into Islam. I come from a community that it is not less than 270,000 Muslims. And I belong to a community that was almost 300,000 Muslims in Houston. In New York, there is half a million, and in Chicago as well, and so is in California. And so when, there, when we say 17 to 30 percent are convert, meaning indigenous Americans, African Americans, Caucasian Americans, or Latino Americans who embraced Islam, that means they found something good about this religion that they thought they wanted to be part of. But the underlying question is, how did that happen? It must have happened by meeting a neighbor that knew how to speak about Islam. Perhaps they themselves took a research to find out what this religion is all about. Or perhaps that they met someone in the plane. I flew to Seattle, Washington. It's a four hour flight from Dallas, Texas. Go Mavericks. And if you don't agree, I ask you to just leave the room. I'm just kidding. I came in late to the plane, running, rushing in, and I sat. And of course, the person who gave me the ride, I turned on the phone and I said, oh, Ammar, Jazakallah khair, salamu alaikum. And literally, the person who was sitting to my left, he jumped. I mean, he literally jumped off his chair. And then he told his neighbor, can we switch chairs? Wallahi, I'm telling you. And then he had the audacity to look at me and says, no offense, sir. And I looked at him and I said, no offense, brother. I hung up my call. And of course, this was an amazing conversation that it started by saying, why do you Muslims hate Jesus so much? And I said to him, you want me to tell you about Jesus? And of course, the whole flight was just talking about that a Muslim cannot be a Muslim, he or she, unless they believed in Jesus. He is one of the most revered prophets in Islam. So if I don't believe in Jesus wholeheartedly and his purified mother, the Virgin Mary, I would not be a Muslim. In fact, I would not be complete in my religion if I don't believe in Jesus. Muslim community coming into its own was an article written by Kathy Grossman, The Mosques in America, a National Portrait 
USA Today, 2001. This was coordinated by the Hartford Seminaries Institution or Institutes. She wrote that the mosques increased 25% from, from 1994 until 2000. Friday attendees, which is something that you are missing in our masjid in Samamish. I was really, really heartbroken today when I asked the question, by the way, how many people come to your Friday congregation? And the answer was, actually, we don't pray Friday there. And that really broke my heart. And the reason is because we don't have a parking lot. But there was something else that was followed in the same sentence. Brother Ridwan, we don't want to bother our neighbors. We could do Friday, but guess what? We will have to park our cars where the neighbors could be bothered. We didn't want to do that. And so, she says, Friday attendance average have doubled up to 94%. This is the research that she did. She said that the Muslim community are ethnically diverse. Martin Luther King once said, he said, the most segregated day in America, the most divide, divided day in America for us Americans is Sunday. Friday for all of us in the Muslim world is the day that unifies and brings all of us together. All of us come together with this rainbow of representation. There is no mosque that would tell a black man, you cannot come in. You need to go to the other church or to the other mosque. No masjid will tell a white man that you cannot come in. You don't fit with this congregation. None of that happens in the mosque in Islam. Rabbi Rosen once said, it's a red, white, and blue pattern in American history. As each immigrant group has developed a congregational organizational life different from their home country. Their houses of worship are more than just houses of prayers, but centers for a whole range of fellowship and community programs. Just as the Germans, Lithuanians, Irish, and Dutch did centuries before them. Someone spoke about our own community and gave a synonymous look, a similarity to congregations that came before us, Germans, Lithuanians, and others who also came to America and established their own mosques, their own churches. Think, think brothers and sisters, about the Catholics, when they first came to America, how did they feel? How did they feel? We almost did not elect a president, Kennedy, because he was a Catholic. And so, brothers and sisters, America belongs to all of us. This is our country. And I think it is time that we show our city, Sammamish, that not only we are here to exist because we love our city, but we want to be part and parcel of this community. Give us a chance and we will show you that not only we are peaceful people, but we are also peace lovers. We not only extend our hands, but we will hug and kiss one another because we belong to one community. We might be a bit different from you, but we, at the end of the day, are also Americans, and we need our rights. I was, as I said earlier, I was heartbroken to know that we don't pray Friday congregational prayers. And the only thing that we need is 40 parking spots. I look at this rainbow of representation, our community, and a thought will come to our heads. We have planned We've asked, we've solicited, we have even put out brochures and told everyone to come to this event, yet only you came. Keep in mind that it was not raining outside. 
and that it was shiny. Maybe that is the reason people didn't show up. I heard it's very rare to have a sun shines on this date. And then 50 or 60 or 100 years from now, no one even knows who they are, but Allah knows who they are. And that's where sincerity comes from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah Muhammad, Ha antum ha ulai tudauna li tum fiku fi sabilillah. You have been invited to spend fi sabilillah. Famin kum may yabakhal, those whom we have invited to come, they didn't show up. Because they probably thought, oh, this is going to be just another fundraiser. We have been depleted. But as the brother earlier said in his jokes and opening remarks and the stories, that we will never take it with us. Warren Buffett said, give it up, you will never take it with you. And Bill Gates did the same thing. He gave up $22 million, or oh, I mean billion dollars. That's a, a tongue mistake. Not $22 million, he gave $22 billion. Anyone knows who Bill Gates is? I guess the question is, if you don't know who Bill Gates is, maybe you need to change the state. <laughs> Go live somewhere else. And so, I will not take too long. We all know what we need to do. I could stand here and recite the ayat and the ahadith, but if you are not sold on this idea already, to be the pioneers who built this masjid, كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من بنى لله مسجدا كمفحص قطع بنى الله له به بيتا في الجنة. Anyone, anyone who helps to build a small mosque, a masjid, even if it was as big as a bird's nest, Allah will build for you a house in the Jannah. And so I will ask, who wants a house in the Jannah? Oh, you don't? Wallahi, if I could, I would have raised both of my hands and my feet. But I, I couldn't. Who would? Okay. Alhamdulillah. If that's the case, Al-Jannah ghaliya. Inna al-Jannah, yani sil'at al-Jannah ghaliya. So I will ask, who will be the first one? And I was told to start with $25,000. We know that we have a target of $400,000. Is it realistic? Only Allah knows. Is it obtainable? Yes. From this only congregation, Allah knows. Who, who, who else to say no? I went to one of the fundraisings, and one person gave half a million dollars. In one fundraising, we never expected. I was asking, and after I finished with my speech, in a chair like this, in the front table, someone it started with $100,000, and he actually wrote the check and gave it to me. And that was the opening of our fundraising. And so the opening of our fundraising tonight is, is $25,000. Wallahi ya ikhwani, kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the reason I said wallahi, swearing by, by the name of Allah. Because the Prophet also said wallahi. And he does not need to say wallahi, he doesn't speak out of his own whims and desires. Yet in this particular moment, he said, Wallahi, ma naqasa malun min sadaqa. He said, by Allah, I swear to you, if you give, your money will never dwindle. How could it be when Allah in the Quran says, Wallahu yurbi sadaqat. If you give sadaqa or tazaka as, uh, as the Hebrew word, if you give sadaqa or alms to the needy or to a good project like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yurbi sadaqat, increases your wealth. It never decreases. And that's why the Prophet says, Wallahi ma naqasa malun min sadaqa. Qala thalatha uqsimu alayhin. Three things I would swear by Allah on them to authenticate what he was about to say. He said, ma naqasa malun min sadaqa, wa ma zada abdan bi'afun illa izza, wa man tawada'a lillahi raf'a. Three things. If you humble yourself, before Allah, Allah will elevate your status. If you forgive your brother, even though they might wrong you or your sister, Allah will give you honor and elevate your status. And he said, if you spend fi sabilillah, Allah will never dwindle your money. And the reason is, this is the house of Allah. It is the house of God. It is the house where we come together to congregate to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So what's better investment than this? I was told 25,000. Is there someone? $25,000. And for our guests, it is an auction-like. And me being from Texas, apparently by now I have become an expert on it. But this is the way we do it. We congregate and we ask people to raise their hands. And by the way, don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel bachelor. The problem with a lot of us, because Allah has given you, you want to feel humble, you want to feel, you know, let me not show off. But in this particular situation, Allah says you can show off. So you could entice someone else to also donate. If there are two doctors in the room and one doctor donates, another doctor might be enticed to also donate. And that is in the ayah that Allah says, وَإِن تُبْدُ الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنَعِمَّهِ If you donate by saying, I will give you, I will donate, فَنَعِمَّهِ This is a good occasion. But in another occasion, he says, وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَةِ But if you hide it and you give it to the needy people, it's not a moment to show off. Because you're embarrassing someone else. But in this setting, it is okay to raise your hand and say, I will give this much. It is okay to do that, by the way. And so who will be the first 25,000? Going once. Going twice. Going two and a half times. <laughs> okay. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Let me not linger. Uh, I see some negotiations and people left the room and then they're coming back. Was there any negotiation going on? No? These suits were not businessmen, huh? No negotiations going on, right? Okay. It says, uh, is there any? Oh, mashallah. I knew there was something cooking. Mashallah. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Say ameen. This dua, when someone donates and we make dua, we don't know who's righteous amongst us. But maybe by that person, by sincerely saying, Oh, Allah, replace for them what they donated. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Oh, Allah, give them what they donated. It will be so. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Wallahi, ya ikhwani, it is amazing. It is amazing. And I will put someone on the spot. And it will be you. Ah, mashallah. Are you a believer? Huh? Do, uh, what? Don't say inshallah. This is not a moment you say, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe I am a believer. No. If someone asks you, are you a believer? You say, yes, I am a believer. You know why? Because Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not yet, not yet, no, no pledge cards yet, not yet, not yet. When someone raised their hands, you'll come to them. I will go faster. Believe me, I will. Prophet Ibrahim, when he was asked, he was asked, he asked Allah, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhi al Oh Allah, show me how do you resurrect the dead? Allah says to him, Awalam tu'min, are you not a believer? Qala bala. Yes, I am. I just want to see how it's done. And you know the continuation of this where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, cut four birds, put them in different mountains, and call them, they will come to you alive, only by the permission or the will of Allah. And so when you're asked, are you a believer? You say, yes. And the next question is, you believe wholeheartedly that the Quran is the word of Allah, right? Of course. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَن ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفُهُ لَهُ Who will give Allah a loan? And Allah will pay it back to you double and multiple many, many Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha and Allah multiplies to whomever he wants. So Wallahi, I am saying, as the Prophet swore by Allah, I will say the person who donated this 25,000, I assure you their future is bright. I assure you their future, inshallah ta'ala, it will be bright. And the reason is we are investing in this moment with Allah. This is after all the house of Allah. It is the house of worship. We come here only to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wallahi, I'm telling you, our children, the future generation of Muslim American in this very congregation, 
We must teach them to keep their identity. They need to know that they are Muslims and not walk around with guilt by association. There is nothing wrong, as I said earlier, to say that I am an American Muslim. But how will they know their, their identity if they don't come to a place on Friday congregation? Or, and by the way, I know some of the high schoolers are, have the ability to come on Friday and pray because they don't need to park cars. They could just come either walking or whatever the case might be. Why deny them that right? Why deny them to know their religion? And if we don't build it for them, it's going to be a problem. Not having a masjid where you just park your car and go to pray is going to be a problem. It'll make you lazy not want to come to the masjid. And the Prophet says, قَالَ مَنْ تَوَضَّأَ فِي بَيْتِهِ فَأَحْسَنَ الْوَضُوءِ ثُمَّ خَرَجَ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ لَا يُخْرِجُهُ إِلَّا الصَّلَاةِ فَمَا خَطَى مِنْ خُطْوَةٍ إِلَّا وَرُفْعَتْ لَهُ بِهِ دَرَجَةٍ وَحُطَّتْ عَنْهُ بِهَا خَطِيئَةٍ Not a single person of us makes ablution and cleans themselves, leaving their house, going to the mosque or to the masjid. Nothing makes them come to the masjid except to pray, except that there is a step they will take, their sins will be wiped off, and Allah will elevate their status one degree at a time. What's better than that? But if I don't have a place to park my car, you know, maybe it's raining, it's muddy, all of that, you will be lazy. And the shaitan is not going to leave you alone. The enemy is going to whisper. And he's going to tell you, oh, you don't need to get today. It's rainy, it's, you know, dreary. Don't go. And that's, brothers and sisters, we need to eliminate because we need to build our masjid. We need to have it as a community center where people get to come to it. So that's the first 25. Who will compete with the 25? And we don't, like I said, we might not have time, so we need to hasten it. Who will compete with the second 25? This is where the competition comes. Allah says in the Quran, This is one of the best competitions that you and I could to compete in it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, for those of you who came to this country with not much in their pockets, we open our garages in the spring, and I turn to my wife and I say, Honey, when did we buy this? Where did we get this from? And we have never fathomed in our life that a day will come when we will have extra, let alone having a house, a car, a family, you know, money, income. We never thought. But Allah gave you that rizq. And it was fi ilm al ghayb It was in an unknown status. And now look at you. So spend. Allah will give you more. Allah will give you more. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ Our rizq is in the hands of Allah. Our rizq is in the hands of Allah. And Allah put our provision for each and every one of us 50,000 before Allah created heavens and earth. Before He told it be and it was, Allah knew how much I was going to earn. And so never fear that a day will come. And wallahi, many times I say this. I stand before you proclaiming kufr and disbelief in anyone who wears their $2,000 suit, stands on the so-called financial studios and tell us tsunami or financial tsunami is coming our way. Or that there is bankruptcy looms about or maybe financial troubles awaiting at the horizon. I don't believe in that. Because Allah is the one who gives me my provision, not my manager who signs my check and not my company. The company existed so that I get to earn from them. That's what happens, right? Right? Because my rizq comes from them. I never knew that I would come to Seattle, work for Microsoft or work for this company 10 years before I came to America. Never. Or before you graduated. And so where is the second 25,000? Going once, going twice. No more negotiations? Okay, that's fine. Wasam, what's, uh, what's the second good number that you know of of this community that someone could afford to donate? 24, five, oh, mashallah. <laughs> uh, you must be a good engineer. I, I, however, cannot save my life to do math. So don't quiz me when it comes to math. I know one plus one is two and a half, so that's called synergy. So 15? Okay. Who will be 15? 15,000. 15,000, and inshallah ta'ala, let's move forward.
15,000. Keep in mind that we're donating fi sabilillah. 15,000 also, brothers and sisters, is tax write-off. And as I was one time corrected by the imams, it is not only tax write-off, it is also sins write-off, right? Uh, Uncle Sam might give you tax write-off, but Allah will write off your sins as well. Keep in mind we're donating fi sabilillah. We're not donating for something that's vain. We're not building a, 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 a place where, where, where wickedness is, is conducted. We're building a place as Kamaqala Abid Darda that Al Masjid Baytukullu Taqi. The Masjid is the house of every righteous. And if the Masjid is truly your house, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will pave a way into Al Jannah for the future. And the Prophet says, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُلَ يَرْتَادَ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَاشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ If you see a person frequents the mosque or the masjid, witness that he or she is a believer. Witness that he or she is a believer. And so coming to the masjid is good, but we need to have the ability to do it. Fifteen, going once. Brothers and sisters, I'm, I'll be very bold. Look, if you can't afford it, do it. Don't delay it. وَالشَّيْطَانِ يَعِدَكُمُ الْفَقْرِ Shaitan promises us poverty. And the reason is, is that if we hold, if we hold, believe me, that does not mean it is going to us, it's going against us. You know, the Prophet told Aisha, his wife, he says, where is the leg of that lamb? She said, O Prophet, all of the sheep left except this lamb stayed, this leg of lamb stayed behind. He said, no, Aisha. All the lamb stayed except the leg of the lamb. She said, how come? She said, the lamb that was divided into charity to the needy people, it stays with us. But the leg of lamb that we eat, we will waste it. And so it never really stayed with us. And so the money that we keep, we might think it stays with us, but really it doesn't. The money that we give, if we can afford it, it actually stays with us because it's now written on the record of our deeds. And so 15, going once. You know, in Texas, we say we can lead a horse to water, but we can't force it to drink. And so I'll say twice, 15,000. Your sadaqa will, will shield you. As the Prophet ﷺ says, قال الصدقة, giving sadaqa, giving tazaka, giving sadaqa, giving in charity, it shields you from harms. Why would Allah want to harm us if we continuously thank Allah by spending in His sake? 15 going once, going twice. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Good. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Okay. Now, there is a magical number, however, and I know it's the 10,000, right? Sahih? Okay. 10,000. Who will be the first one to say, we are willing to donate on the name of my family, maybe my deceased father, my sick child. And by the way, as the Prophet Sallallahu says, قَالَ دَاوُوا مَرْضَاكُمْ بِالصَّدَقَاتِ Give cure to a sick person in your family by spending for Allah's sake. And subhanAllah, we hold the money and all of a sudden we have a sick child and we have to spend the money just to give him cure. But if we spend fi sabilillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who protects us and shields us. So we spend for his sake. 10,000. Ma sha Allah akhuna nadhar fi sabilillah lil masjid. Allahumma barik li akhuna nadhar. Qulu ameen. اللهم أعط موفقا خلفا قلوا أمين اللهم بارك له في رزقه وافتح عليه اللهم وباء و و وإحمى أبنائه وزويه قلوا أمين may Allah protect him and protect his family and his wealth and may Allah give him longevity and righteous deeds and may Allah protect his رزق his provision نذار and I were were classmates we went to school together and yes he used to beat me up when I was young just kidding so, mashallah, Brother Nazar is a, is a colleague and a brother of mine. I went to a missionary school. For those of you who did not know, I actually went to a Catholic school. And it was a missionary school in Sudan, in Khartoum. 
And he and I, we attended that school. And subhanAllah, he and I, we actually formed a small mosque in the school where the midday prayers, the students will come and pray dhuhr with us. And he was responsible of bringing the mats. I was responsible of making the caller for the prayers. And that's how we got to know one another, subhanAllah. And then all of a sudden, we, before the discovery of Facebook, I lost sight of him. And I never really got to see him on Facebook. I only have my face. I don't have a Facebook. And so I met him in Chicago after 25 years. And so, Brother Nazar, may Allah bless you and accept from you. Who will compete with Nazar for $10,000? It's to the masjid. Do it in payments and make sure that at least we get our permit and we get our parking spots, which is 40 parking spots. It'll solve all the problems to the neighbors and it will usher in a new era for the Muslim community in Sammamish. And wherever we go, we must leave a legacy behind. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, for many of the masajid, wherever you travel in America, know for an assurity that one or two or maybe 10 people came together and built it. You will never know who they are. You will never ever know who they are. But they built it, and guess what? يَقُولُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ When the son of Adam dies, in قَطْعَ عَمَلُهُ your, 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 your deeds will stop. إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ Except three things. Continuous charity. Knowledge that you leave behind that benefits the people. وَإِبْنُ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُ لَهُ Righteous son that prays for you after you die. You see? And so it's very important that we leave a legacy behind. I personally have never seen a hearse followed by a U-Haul truck. I don't know about you all, but I have never seen a hearse followed by a U-Haul truck. So leave a legacy behind. Who will be the second 10,000? The second 10,000. The second, ma sha Allah, tabarakallah, Allahumma atamu fiqan khalafan. Qulu amin. By the way, the first 25, was that anonymous? I knew it. See, the anonymous family follows me wherever I go to do fundraising. That family member is always with me. So may Allah give barakah to my anonymous family member. Say ameen. Allahumma atamu fiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Akhuna, what is your name? Ramadan, Masha Allah, we will fast you very soon, inshallah. May Allah, may Allah, ba Allahumma barik lana fi Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. <laughs> may Allah give barakah to our brother Ramadan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him. Nas'al Allah an yudkhiluhu min babir rayyan. Qulu ameen. Wallahi, what a befitting name. What a befitting name. Babur rayyan, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, qala la yadkhuluhu illa, Huh? As-Sa'imun. So, Ramadan, wa ismun hasun. Masha'Allah, tabarakallah, takbir. Oh. Huh? Okay. You want to have your 15 seconds fame? What? No. <laughs> Masha'Allah. Okay. Tell, by the way, tell Brother Wasim, I got the message. And I will ask the ladies. Ladies, Brother Wasim is saying, please donate generously. Jazakum Allah khair. Oh, by the way, you can help us with one thing. Y'all have your husband's cell phone numbers. Just text him and say, donate. Just the word, donate. Okay? And, and if he doesn't donate, give him a week on the couch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> MashaAllah. Okay, Jazakum Allah Khair. Um, that's 10,000 for the anonymous, 10,000 for Brother Ramadan, and 10,000 from Nadar. Allahumma a'ti mufiqan khalafan. Say Ameen. Maybe two more 10,000, and that'll make it 50,000, and that'll give us really a good push. Two more 10,000. Two more 10,000. So let's hurry up. Two more 10,000. Sisters, a 10,000. And yes, don't fix your dabattas or your tarha, otherwise I'll count you in. <laughs> Because that will be an indication of raising your hand. Sisters, 10,000? I see some negotiation is going on there as well, brother Wasi. So they, they're, they're working on it, inshallah. So the fourth, 10,000. That will make it 40,000. It will give us a good push. 10 more thousand. Maybe, maybe a group of brothers or sisters can come together and give us the 10,000. Maybe two people can come together and give us the 10,000. 
10,000 going once, compete with Nadar and Ramadan and Brother Anonymous. And 10,000 going twice, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafa. Allahumma a'ta mufiqan khalafa. Wallahi, I will remind you of a true story that I heard personally and authenticated before I came to this fundraiser. And yes, I do want to move your emotions. Because in giving, in giving, we are actually protecting ourselves physically in this world by building and telling our neighbors that we are here and we want to get to know you more on, on a different level. And in Al-Akhirah as well, because we are building a house for Allah here, and Allah is building for us a palace in paradise, inshallah, right? And so I authenticated this story before I came, and this was in Egypt, Cairo. In Cairo, this man got up from his cafe seat. He was sitting on a cafe on the side of the streets. And he got up and ran across the street, barely, and by the time he got to the to the second street, he had to pause, and his breath, he has a heart condition. But he noticed that there is this woman who was grabbing things from the ground. It was a butcher shop. And as the butcher would hit the table, pieces from the meat and the bones would fall off, and she would collect them. And subhanAllah, the man inquired, he says, Auntie, what are you doing? She said, son, I am a widow and I left behind five orphan girls. And we don't have anyone that helps us. And every week, I am allowed to come to the butcher shop and collect the meat that falls from the butcher table and some bones. I go home and I make broth out of it. I crunch some dry bread and that's how I feed my kids. The man became so emotional, he turned around and he went to the owner of the shop and he said, for one year, every week she will come here and you will give her enough meat for five or six people for a whole year. He said, I turned 180 degree and I literally ran back to my seat in the cafe. And he said, for the first time in his life, he did not feel that his, his chest was tightening on him. He said he thought nothing of it. The woman made a lot of dua for him. She almost wanted to hug him and kiss him and say, Son, Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you. And then he went home afterwards. When he entered home, his own daughter, this man, came to him. She said, Baba, I have never seen such big smile on your face. And you look lively. He said, Wallahi, this is what happened today with this old woman. His daughter raised her hand. She says, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. As you, she said, Ya Allah, cure my father's heart. As he put a smile in this old woman's face. So three months later, he went back to London. And the doctors originally told him that he only had three months. And that he needed to go back to Egypt to finish his affairs. Because when he comes back after three months and they would have to do an open heart surgery to fix one of his valves, the chances of succeeding in this operation was not good at all. And when the doctors checked him before they do the operation, they said, we don't need to do an operation anymore. And see, this amazes me how sometimes when we spend fi sabilillah purely for the sake of Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors us as well. And so when the Prophet sallallahu says, قَالَ دَاوُوا مَرْضَاكُمْ بِالصَّدَقَاتِ You know, cure your sickness by spending fi sabilillah, the Prophet spoke the truth. And this was a true story that I authenticated before I came. The doctors were saying, this is a miracle. And he remembered, he said, this was the dua of the old lady. This was the prayers of the old lady. Allah gives the sickness and Allah also gives the cure. We cannot imagine how Allah created heavens and earth. We will never know, nor can we imagine it by Allah telling it be and it was, and Allah is able to do whatever He wants. We only use the means. And so I'm asking for one final time for this category of 10,000. Anyone want to donate for the 10,000 before we move forward? Going once, 
going twice? Alhamdulillah. Okay. Wasam, what's the next category? You know your people, who, what they can afford. What is the next number? Knowing that we did not have full tables tonight, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always puts the barakah fil qaleel. Al barakah fil qaleel. Seven, you said, or eight? Eight? Okay. Eight thousand. Divide them over three or six or one year and pay them off to the masjid, inshallah. Eight thousand. This is a discount. <laughs> Eight thousand. Eight thousand. وما أنفقتم من شيء فهو يخلفه. Whatever you spend, Allah will give it back to you. A promise of Allah. One another, the same family. Apparently, that family is growing by leaps and bounds. Masha Allah. Excellent. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give barakah to our anonymous brother. Say Amin. Or anonymous sister, of course. Say Amin. اللهم أعطم فن خلفا اللهم بارك لهم في أهلهم وأولادهم وزويهم وأموالهم اللهم بارك لهم في أرزاقهم اللهم بارك لهم في أرزاقهم يا الله we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give them بركة and to bless them in this and in the hereafter say آمين may Allah bless them who else who will compete with the anonymous and by the way like I said all that you have to do and say I will do it I will do it just like that and so we need to do it. Just raise your hands. I mean, we will recognize you and make dua for you. What else? So who else? Who else, Ya Shabab? Who else? And by the way, I'm waiting for my esteemed juggler, the, the person who, uh, the entertainer, right? The artist. May Allah bless you. I, you and I, you know, you and I could really be good friends. You know why? You don't know why, do you? You see, this is the, one of the rare, rare times that I come to Seattle and I'm not wearing a suit. And therefore, you and I belong to the same club. I know, we, you and I have the shiny heads, I know. And uh, you and I could really have a, a good club together. I wouldn't be able to juggle them things, though. So you have to teach me, all right? I know you and I are the handsomest two people in this crowd. You don't agree? Okay, we are at 8,000. We got one, right, Wasim? And is there a second one? Is there a second one? Going once, going twice. وَمَا أَنفَقْتُم مِّن شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Allah says in the Quran, whatever you spend, Allah will replace it back. Allah will give it back to you. Wallahi ya ikhwani, I'm telling you, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that you would be in the same office and we don't wish this on anyone? I, in particular, who worked in corporate America, I don't wish this on anyone, especially if you are responsible of a family. Isn't it amazing that you work in the same office, there are people to your left, people to your right, in front of you and behind you have been laid off and you have been spared? You ever wonder why? And some of them know the stuff better than you. Even they have better attitude than you. And some of them are valuable to the company more than you. Yet, they have been let go. And you wonder why. And oftentimes, it had nothing to do with, with, with how much you earn. Because you might even be earning more than they are. Yet, you have been spared. You never wonder why. Maybe it's a dua of your parents. Maybe it's a good thing that you did in your life. Maybe you brought happiness into somebody's heart. You never know. And so doing good is where we need it absolutely at a time of hardship. And this is one case as well. So the 8,000, we go in once. We got one person, right? Yes, Sheikh Wasim. Twice. Go in twice. Alhamdulillah. So what is the next category then, Ya Sheikh? Five? Okay. I have a deal with you. For 5,000, we need obviously 42. We need 42 parking spots and we are going to sell these parking spots inshallah of course your name will not be written on them so you can't just come in and park your car and says I paid for this parking spot right we're not gonna do that but we ask you to buy one of the parking spots you know honestly we could have just paid 5,000 for each parking spot and we could have been done tonight really and so I'm asking each and every one of you, if 
how many of you would like to buy a parking spot? And we are beginning at $5,000, right, Wasim? Right? Okay, so $5,000 per parking spot, and we might negotiate the price later on, inshallah. Sisters, you can also help us in this. Who would be? Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Allahumma atamu fighan khalafan, say ameen. And what is your good name? Shafiq. Shafiq, Masha Allah, what a beautiful name. Shafiq, someone who is kind, someone who has easiness in his heart, and someone who has shafaqa, meaning that he always wishes good to others. So may Allah bless you, Brother Shafiq, what a befitting name, may Allah bless you. So that's the first 5,000. Remember, we have how many, 42 parking spots or 40? 40. Four okay, that's the first one. Which is the second one? Who would like to? And those who paid 10,000 or those who paid 25, we have two parking spots. Excellent, mashaAllah. Allahumma atamu fa'an khalafan. Say ameen. So now we have three parking spots that have been sold. Who else? Who else? Parking spots that we are selling them, inshallah, fi sabilillah. Of course, we're not going to put your name on it, and that's a disclaimer. <laughs> who else? Who else, ya shabab? And for those of you who actually paid the 10,000, ya wasim, we will say they got two parking spots, right? Right? And for those of you who gave 8,000, they bought a parking spot and one third. Okay? And for those of you who gave the 25,000, you have five parking spots, inshallah. Every time someone parks there, you will receive the ajr, inshallah. Wallahi ya ikhwani, it is so amazing. I belong to a community in Houston, Texas. And we all worked at Compaq at the time, before HP came and bought it. Subhanallah, I personally hopped in the mud many, many times in order to enter a trailer home. We were so desperate for water, we went to one of our neighbors and we said, we will pay your entire water bill. Just extend a hose from your home, secure it to your, your garden, your garden uh, faucet, and we get to just you know, make ablution once in a while. And whatever water bill you get, we will give it to you. A year later, of course, we were paying his entire water bill, but after building the masjid and how immaculate now it looks, with a fountain in the front, and I heard fountain earlier. With the way that mosque was lit and controlled and how the people and the kids were coming, the property value in that neighborhood doubled. Every time a church or a mosque or a synagogue or a temple built in any neighborhood, guess what? The property value doubles. You know why? A church. Who comes to a church? But good people. And who comes to a mosque? But good people. And who comes to a synagogue? But good people. They're coming there to do what? They're coming there to serve God, to worship Allah. And of course, that will double the value of that property because the neighborhood knows that these people are not here for trouble. And this is something that we will prove to our neighbors, inshallah. I'm very sure that I will see Muslims every Saturday going out cleaning in the neighborhood. I'm very sure I will see our sisters maybe once in a while cooking up and selling food maybe on Fridays and some of the proceeds will go out to establish a new um, service in the community, inshallah. Adopt a road and call it the Samamish Islamic Center Adopted Road where our children and our community members go out every once in a while and clean it. When it snows in here, Make sure that we clean and pave the area, especially if we find in our neighborhoods that are elderly, we go and we help them. Why not? And by the way, we don't do it to, for you know, a self-serving or, or we do it because we want to show that Muslims can do this. No, we do it genuinely because this is part of our religion, part of, our, part of, of who we are, all right? So now we're selling the parking spots we got we got the 25 for five parking spots. We got how many tens? Three tens, so that makes it, can you help? I'm not good at math. 30 times, 30 divided by five is what? Six, so that's six plus five is 11. I'll be asking a lot of questions tonight. So 11 parking spots plus eight, 
that makes it one and a half plus two fives. That makes it how many parking spots? 21? OK, 21 parking spots now, and we need to sell more. We have how many left out of the 40? I thought all of you work for Microsoft. You don't? OK, I think you have to be good in math to work for Microsoft, right? <laughs> so uh, we are at the 5,000 category. Who else? For 5,000 and buying parking spots, inshallah. Who else? Let's not take too long because Maghrib is upon us. Who else? Who else, yeah, was him? Did you get any more anonymous? 5,000 going once. 5,000 going twice. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, may Allah bless you. Bahut, bahut shukriya, Janab. Bilkul shukriya. And your name? Ashraf, MashaAllah. Honorable name. Ashraf means honorable, unique, uh, noble. May Allah bless you, brother Ashraf, and accept from you, inshaAllah. Allahumma a'tamu fi khalafa. Allahumma a'tamu fi khalafa. May Allah bless you and bless your family, bless your income and your children, inshaAllah. Say ameen. Who else? Who else? Uh, Brother Wasim, we still have to serve food, right? So don't leave uh, because we're going to eat, inshallah. Who else? 5,000, who else? For $5,000, who else, ya shabab? Wallahi, yani, if you can afford it, do it. I, I didn't need to travel to come and do this. And honestly, the only reason we brought everybody together because this is the only way, the venue to bring people together so we could finish the project. Okay? So who else? for $5,000. Go in once, go in twice, and sisters, you can help us. You know the situation of your family. You can tell your husband, please donate for the sake of Allah. And this, wallahi, protects our children as well. We need to have our children come. You have seen the services that are provided in this masjid. In this masjid, you know, brothers and sisters, how else are we willing to dispel the notion that we are radicalizing our youth? without actually in the open building a masjid, building a mosque, and to tell the world this is what we do in it, and to dispel any of this ignorance. And so when our youth are coming to a well-known imam that is teaching them the correct concepts of Islam, they are coming to a safe haven, which is a, a wholesome place like this, then we feel comfortable because they are not getting a drive-through knowledge through you know, YouTube or whatever the case might be, ready-made fatwa, and that's it. This is the place where we get to do this. If we want to save and protect our, our youth, this is where we get to do it. And so 5,000 going once, going twice. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Good. And after that is 2,500? Three? Okay, 3,000 as Wasim says. $3,000. Ya Shabab, just raise your hand and say, I will donate this much because we need to really move faster. I will donate this much, 3000 or 2500 or 1000 Just raise your hand and say, I will donate this much. The $3,000. We're starting at 3000 now. Sisters, you do the same thing as well. I was told to also ask and solicit the, the sisters. Our better half, right? You better say yes. They're looking at you. Nod, say yes. Good. They are saying yes, sisters. OK, 3,000. And if you're writing it on the pledge card and you don't want to name it, that's fine. But just say, uh, Wasim, let me know if we receive the 3,000. OK? And raise your hand for the 2,500. Raise your hand for the 2,500, inshallah. And raise your hand for the 15, mashallah, 2,500. Allahumma a'ta muffiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Uh, and what is your name, ya sheikh? Tariq, mashallah. Barakallahu lana fiqya tariq. Nasallah an yubarik lana fi tariq. Qulu ameen. Wa al-najmu al-thaqib, mashallah. Allah yubarik lana fiqya tariq. Wa yuhfadak. Wa yuzik anna kulla khair. Allahumma a'ta muffiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Barakallahu fiqh, brother Tariq. Allahumma ihfadh. وزد في ماله واحفظه وأهله وزويه وأبنائه قلوا آمين Okay, who else? Who else? 3,000 or 2,500? 3,000 or 2,500 and also the 2,000, right? Wasim? 
Just raise your hand and say, I'm donating this much. Whatever you can afford today from the numbers. We have 3,000, 2,500, 2,000, 1,500, 1,500. Who else? Raise your hand and say, I will donate this much so we get the counted. Who else, ya shabab? MashaAllah, shukriya janab. How much? 2,000. Uh, and the name? Suhail. Sahalallahu alayka ya Suhail. May Allah make it easy for you. Suhail means easy, easy going. And you can tell from his face, with a big smile like that, you can't go wrong. May Allah make it easy for you, Suhail. And Nasallah, Allahumma a'tamu fiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Allahumma a'tamu fiqan khalafan. Say ameen. Zakallah khair brother Suhail. Who else? And tell me how much. Raise your hand and say, I will donate. Sisters, raise your hand and say, I will donate this much. Who else? No takers. Okay, who else? The brothers. The brothers, who else? We have a 2,000 or 1,500 or whatever the number. Just raise your hand and say, I will donate this much. Sheikh Wasim, do you have any numbers coming your way? 2,000, 1,500. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All of you have your, have your pledge cards in front of you, and I will close with this. So, brothers and sisters. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man salla al-fajra fi jama'a, Man salla al-isha'a fi jama'a, Faka'annama qama nusfu al-layl. Wa man salla al-fajra fi jama'a, Faka'annama qama al-nusfu al-akhar. So if you pray isha'a, in one masjid, in congregational prayers, once in a while, preferably every day, but once in a while, because now Isha is 11.30 p.m. It is the end of night prayers. If we pray it in congregational prayers, then as if I have woken up half of the night standing in prayers to Allah. And if I come on Fajr time to the congregational prayers, I would have as if I stood the other half, meaning the whole night I was standing up praying. But now I leave you with this question. How are we willing or how will we be able to have the ajr of waking up all night long? If I don't get to go there because it is dark or I don't want to bother the, fam the neighbors, or that I cannot have a spot to park my car? It is, a, it is an answer for this question that I leave with you, insha'Allah. With that, jazakum Allah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. And we make one more dua. Allahumma a'timu fighan khalafa. Allahumma a'timu fighan khalafa. Allahumma a'timu fighan khalafa. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it was a pleasure to also know that we have guests. Uh, we have not introduced them. I don't know if that was part of the program, but we, we should honor our guests and maybe introduce them as well. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum. It's okay. <laughs>